everybody, this is Jennifer from Fertilump, and today I have a tutorial for you on beginning crochet and how to make a bun cover. For those of you who follow us on Instagram, you've probably seen that Lane wears these to ballet class around her buns, and I've actually done a few whimsical ones for the holidays as well with, you know, kind of embellishing them and such, but this is just to help you learn basic crochet for a very beginner starter project. I'm hoping to inspire some of you who don't know how to crochet or who might be intimidated by learning it and teach you how to make a, an easy project that you can wear or give as a gift. So let me just tell you how you can get started. You want a really basic acrylic yarn to learn on if you're a beginner. Um, if you're gonna go to the store and buy some, Red Heart Super Saver is a super great yarn. The skeins are really big, so you could probably make about literally like four or five at least bun covers out of one skein. And this will run you about $3, $4 or so, and it's a lot, a lot of yarn. And it's great. It comes in all different colors, and it's readily available at Joann's. You can also find it at a lot of Walmart stores carry it. And it's just a great yarn. Beginner, and you don't know anything about yarn, um, what you'll need to do is look at the label and it'll tell you if it's acrylic or wool or cotton or whatever. Like I said, acrylic is a really great place to start, especially for craft projects. And if you look right here, on, on your label, it's going to tell you the recommended crochet hook size for this particular yarn. This would be for knitting, and this would be for crochet. So you can see it's a size I or a nine and a 5.5 millimeter hook. So that's the hook that you should use with this yarn. If you're looking at crochet hooks, again, you can get these at a craft store, Michaels, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, even Walmart carries basic crochet hook. This hook will probably only run you about $1.50 or so, so they're not super expensive. You can see that it says what size it is. It is an I9 5.5 millimeter hook. So this is the exact hook that you would need to use for that yarn, hooks and such. But this is a great hook that's affordable but that feels a lot more comfortable in your hand. It's made by Clover, it's an Amour hook, and they do carry these at Joann's. They retail for about $8, which compared to a $1.50 hook is a little bit more pricey, but you can use a 50% off coupon and get these. And I do really recommend them. I'm the type of person who likes a squishy like pencil gripper, and they have a nice soft cushiony handle, and they feel good in your hand, and they don't cause you to cramp up so much. So. When you're looking at the crochet hook, you'll see it says a 5.5 millimeter eye hook, which is perfect for that Red Heart Super Saver yarn. So this is the crochet hook that we're gonna use. So you're gonna need some yarn and a crochet hook. You're also gonna need a yarn needle or a tapestry needle. These are also sold in the same aisle as the crochet hooks. You can get a couple in a package for a dollar, two dollars. Um, some of them are metal, some of them are plastic, it really doesn't matter. You're also gonna need a pair of scissors or clippers, something basically just to cut the yarn, so it doesn't matter. And for this particular project, you're gonna need some elastic. This is elastic cord. It's a little bit thicker than the stuff that you use for craft bracelets. You can get this at a hobby store, craft store. It's available in white or black. So if you're using like a black yarn or a darker yarn, you could use black elastic. It'll blend a little better. For lighter colors, you can use white. Okay, as I said, this is kind of a beginner level tutorial. So if you get lost, just pause it, catch up to where I am, or just rewind and watch it over. I'm doing some very basic stitches in this tutorial. It would be a chain stitch, a triple crochet, also sometimes called a treble crochet, and also a slip stitch. At the very end, we're gonna also do a half double crochet. So those are the only stitches that you'll need to know, and I'm gonna walk you through it. We're gonna be using this pink yarn and this size eye hook to begin, and you wanna kinda of have some slack to your yarn. It'll make your tension a little bit better, so don't pull it off so much that it's knotting up, but you wanna have enough that you can pull from. And we're gonna start by making our little slip knot to get our chain on, and this was actually one of the hardest things for me to grasp, and I look back at that now and it's actually very easy, but it just seems challenging when you start. So you take your end of your yarn and you want it to slack over a few inches like like this and what you're going to do is hold both ends if you can see what I'm doing here take this top loop and twist it like that 
then you're going to reach through and grab this back yarn and pull it through. So you see how that makes a little loop up there on the top? Let me show that to you one more time just in case you didn't get it. You're going to take the end of your yarn and you're going to have it hanging down just a few inches like this or so. You're going to make it like a big loop just like that. You're going to take the top loop, twist it once, reach through that loop, let me show you again, twist this upper loop, <laughs> it's not wanting to cooperate, twist that upper loop just like that, reach through, grab this top yarn here, the one in the back, and pull it through just like that, okay, and this is called a slip knot. Once you've got that little slip knot here in the front, you're going to insert your hook front to back. And what you can do is pull it up like this and you're going to cinch it up. Okay. And you don't want it squeezing the life out of your hook. You just want it to be able to slide, but not be open too loose. So once you've got that, the next challenging thing is to figure out how you hold your yarn. This is creating your tension. I go back and around my finger, and then through my two fingers, and forgive the fact that I have horrible looking nails. I'm just not one of those manicure type people. Anyway, so you're gonna go back and around. I'm not gonna go crazy telling you how to hold the yarn because I've seen a lot of crocheters hold it very, very different. So if it doesn't feel comfortable to you like this, you need to hold it in a way that's going to feel comfortable in your hand. So you might want to search around at other tutorials and see how others use it especially if you're you're right-handed or left-handed it may be different but I'll show you just again how I do it is like this um, and it just you know whatever feels comfortable so once you've got that and this is creating the tension you want this yarn to be a little bit tight but so you your loop your loops and your stitches don't you know just fall right off your hook so you want to create some tension with your two fingers down here and then you've got your slack back here that you'll be feeding. So to start out, you want to just kind of pinch this little slip knot that you just made between your finger and your thumb. And you're going to take your crochet hook, which again is able to slide and turn very easily. And what we're going to be doing is a chain stitch. And this is important to all crochet, you will pretty much always do a chain stitch. So what you're going to do is you're going to loop over grab that yarn through the hook and pull it through this little opening here that's looped around your hook. So you're going to pull that just like that. That's one chain. We're going to chain four. So one, reach over, grab up the yarn, pull it through the loop. One, two chains. Do it again. Reach over, pull it through the loop. Three chains. Reach over one more time, pull it through. So we've got your knot here doesn't count. That's your knot. So then you've got one, two, three, four chains, and what's on your hook also doesn't count. So we did four chains. And now what we're going to do is a slip stitch into our first chain to create a loop. So what we're going to do is come right over here to our first loop, and again, our knot doesn't count. Our first chain that we created, you're going to insert right into that loop right there. You're going to pull that loop over, and then what you're going to do is go back into the loop here. That created a chain, I'm sorry, that's a slip stitch. So what we did is our little chains four looped around. So you want to be careful and look that this is your your hole here in your circle. This is just your stretched out first loop. So this is the actual hole we're talking about. So what we're going to go ahead and do is chain up four. So again, loop over, pull through the through the loop, yarn over, pull through the loop is two chains, yarn over, pull through the loop, is three chains, yarn over, pull through the loop, is four chains. Those four chains are going to act as though our first treble crochet or triple crochet. So we've got four. And in between each triple crochet, we're going to put a chain stitch. So say this is our first 
triple crochet, we're going to chain one more, so it'll be in between there. This will make sense in a minute. So we've got five chain stitches right here. Now we're going to do our triple crochet, and how we do that is we yarn over, wrap our yarn twice around our hook, one, two, and then holding it kind of on there, we're going to go into our center circle here, down, we're going to yarn over and come back up out of the loop. So now we have four loops on our hook. What we're going to do is come over, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now we've got three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Now we've got two loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops. That's a triple crochet. So again, where we chained up four was our first triple crochet. Then we did a single chain. Then we did our first actual triple crochet. So now we're going to chain one because in between each triple crochet is going to be a chain one for spacing. So now it's going to be time for our and create another triple crochet. So again, you wrap around the crochet hook twice. You've got one, two loops on your hook, kind of holding that in place. Go down into that center loop, center opening, yarn over, come back through. You've got one, two, three, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. You've got three loops left, yarn over, pull through two. You've got two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through those two. You just did another triple crochet. And then you're going to space them apart with a chain. So one more chain. And it's time for another triple crochet. So again, wrap the yarn twice around your hook, one, two. You're going to go into that circle, yarn over, come back up, four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now you've created four chain in between them. So what we're going to be doing is having 12 of these go around. So we our first chain up to simulate our first triple, then our first actual triple, another triple, another triple. So we've gotten four. We need to have 12. So we're going to just keep doing this all the way around. Again, wrapping the yarn around our hook twice, going into the circle, yarning over, pull it out, four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, I'm going to just point out right now, since it might get caught up in your work, this little tail from where we began, from when we did our slip knot, this is one of those ends that we will weave in. So don't really worry about it. In some crochet projects, you, you can kind of get this caught up in your work and hide it that way. But for right now, we're just going to try to ignore it. If it gets in your way, just kind of push it out of the way. Um, and if you need to, some people's little holes here in the center get a little tight. You can kind of loosen it up if you need more space to get your stitches around. Okay? So one, two, three, four, five. We need to do 12. Again, the stitch that we're doing is called a triple stitch, a triple crochet. Some people call it a treble crochet, but it's a triple crochet, okay? So again, you're going to wrap your yarn around your hook twice, go into the center circle, yarn over. You're going to have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, just going, going over, grabbing some yarn, pulling through the first two loops. You have three on the hook, yarning over, going through two, two on the hook, yarning over, going through two, and then a chain in between. So each one of these stitches is going to have one single chain going in between. Okay? 
So again, just to show you, because you're beginning, two on the hook into the center, yarn over, come through, four on the hook, yarn over, pull through, two, three on the hook, yarn over, pull through, two, two on the hook, yarn over, pull through, two, then a single chain. I am going to point out something because you're a beginner. If you, the nice thing about crochet is, if you mess up, you can just pull it out back to the point where you messed up. So let's just say that instead of wrapping around twice, you only wrapped around once. And then you went in and you yarned over and you're like, oh, darn, I was supposed to have four loops, I have three. What do I do? Well, even if you went further into the stitch up, at any point that you realized you made a mistake, simply pull your hook out, pull the stitching out and get it back to the point where you know, okay, that's where I messed up. Pulling it out is calling frogging. So even if you wanted to pull all the way out, you've completely messed up and you wanna start back from the beginning, none of this is actual knots, it's all continuous. So you would have perfectly clean yarn if you just pulled your hook out and pulled it out. So you could start all over from the beginning without an issue. So again, I'm just gonna show you one more triple crochet. One, two, around the hook, into the center circle, yarn over, pull through, supposed to have four loops on the hook, yarn over and go through the first two loops, yarn over, go through the second two loops, yarn over the last two loops. There you go. And then you do a chain one in between. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got to get to 12. So I'm going to go ahead and get us to 12, and I'll meet you when I'm done. Okay, so now you should have 12 triple crochets. You're actually going to have that first chain four, which is going to serve as our first triple. So we have that, and then we have one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. Now, if you got a little tight and you didn't have room to put your 12th or your 11th, you could just pull these down like that and make more room, okay? So once you've got them all done, this little tail that was from our slip knot in the beginning, you can actually pull this and it'll tighten that circle up there in the center like that. You don't want to pull too hard to break your yarn, but you can cinch up that circle a little bit if you want to, okay? So then once you've got that, what we need to do is a slip stitch into to basically close this circle. So remember these first four chains that we did coming up that was gonna simulate our triple crochet? We're gonna slip stitch into the fourth chain. So you're gonna count and you can see these look like little kind of V's. One, two, three, and four is our fourth. Okay, so what you're just gonna do is go straight into that stitch there. Okay, just like that. You're gonna yarn over and bring it straight through that little hole you just went through. And then you're gonna bring it straight through this loop without yarning over again. And that's basically just doing a slip stitch. And as you see, we've got now a nice circle. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip stitch into this opening here just to get us up to the next level. So what you're gonna do in this little opening right here by your loop, you're gonna go down into that opening, you're gonna yarn over, yarn over like that, bring it back through that opening, and again, without yarning over at all, coming, bringing your yarn back through that loop on your hook. That's another slip stitch. And now we're back on top here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is yarn, I'm sorry, chain up four, again, to simulate a triple crochet. I'm gonna come out of focus here. So again, four chains. To do a chain, you yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Okay. So then once you've got that, we're going to go ahead and this time, in each of these openings here, we're gonna do two triple crochets. Now this first chain four is gonna serve as our first triple crochet. 
So now we're going to do another one. And again, triple crochet, you wrap around your hook twice. You are going to go into this opening right here, yarn over, four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now we've got two triple crochets and then we're going to do one chain in between. So that's one chain. Then we're going to go and do another triple crochet, wrap around twice. We've got two in that opening, so now we're moving on to this opening. So we're going to go right into this opening, down, yarn over, four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now we have one in that space. We need to do two in each space. So again, wrapping around twice, going into that opening, yarn over, come back out, four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then a chain one between each set of two. So you can kind of see where we're going here. Again, we're going to do two triples into the next space. So wrapping twice, going into the next opening here, yarn over, come out, four loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay. Now we need to do a second triple. So wrapping twice around our hook, going into that same opening, down, yarn over, four, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now that we've got our two, we're going to do a chain one, just for spacing. So you can kind of see the shape that we've got going here. I'm just going to show you by comparison on a finished bun cover. So the portion that we're working on now is actually this one. So you see how quick this is coming together. You've already accomplished this part, now we're working on this part. So you're doing really well, okay? If you have to leave your crochet, just leave it just where you are like this. You don't have to worry about it. If it actually accidentally gets tugged out, just, you know, you can start back from, you can count your stitches and kind of see where you left off, okay? So. Again, we have two in this opening, two in this opening, two in this opening, and we have one chain in between each group of two. So we've just done our chain one here, so now we need to do two triple crochets into the next opening. Again, wrapping around twice for a triple crochet, going into the next space, yarn over, come out, four on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, another triple crochet, wrapping around twice, going into the same opening, yarn over, come out, four on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Ooh, sticking. There it goes. Okay, so that two, we're going to space it with a single chain. And we're going to finish doing this pattern all the way around. Two triple crochets in each spoke opening like this, all the way around with one chain in between. So I'll meet you back around. Okay, so once you've come all the way around, two crochets in each spoke opening here with one chain stitch in between. Now we're going to need to do a slip stitch to join. So after you finish this last um, triple crochet, make sure that you do that single chain there for spacing. And we're going to go into the fourth chain that we did here in the beginning. So counting your stitches, one, two, three, and four, without yarning over anything, you're going to go straight into that fourth stitch there. You're going to yarn over and bring it out of that loop like that, okay? And then you're going to come right back without yarning over straight through the loop on your hook. 
and that is a slip stitch. Okay, so then once you've done that, we are going to slip stitch again into this opening to bring us up for the next row. So going into this opening right here where we came out of, going down, yarning over and coming up, and then going back through the loop. I have to see if I can show you this again, chain stitch. Just holding the one that's under your hook and bringing it through the loop on your hook like that. That's a slip stitch. So now we're up above here to do our next round. We are going to continue on with triple crochets, but this time we're going to do them in every other, and I'll explain that in just a second. So first of all, we're going to need to simulate our first um, triple by doing a chain four. So again, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. One, two, three, four chains. Now we're going to do our next triple crochet. Should be pretty familiar with them now, but I'll show you. Wrapping yarn around our hook twice, going into that same spot here where we just chained up from, going into that little opening there, yarn over, pull through. You've got four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Now this time, instead of chaining one in between, we're going to chain two in between. So yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. That's my dog whining. Sorry about that. Okay. So instead of like we did on this round where we did in every opening, we are going to skip an opening and go into the next. So that's why we did the two chains here because we're going a bigger space. So we did two, chain two, skip this opening, go into the next opening with a triple crochet, wrapping around our hook twice, going into the next opening, Bringing it up, we have four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So as you see, chain four, triple crochet, chain two, skip that spot, go into that spot. Once triple crochet, now we need to do another into the same spot. So wrapping around our hook twice, going into that opening there. Yarn over, come through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So we have our two triple crochets. Now we need to chain two. One and two. And that's for spacing. I gotta pull some yarn here. All right, so again, we're gonna skip this next opening and go into the one after that. So after we've done our chain two here, we're gonna do a triple crochet, wrapping around twice, going in, skip this space, go into this space, go straight down into it, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. That's our triple crochet. And now we're gonna do another one, wrapping the yarn around twice, Go into that same space, yarn over, pull up. You've got four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Now we need to do a chain two for spacing. One and two. So you kind of see the new pattern here. Two, empty space, two triple crochet, skip a space, two, skip a space. And wherever we're skipping these spaces, we've done a chain two up here. And again, when we're looking at our finished bun cover, you can see this is what we're doing now, this area down here, okay? So I'll walk you through it one more step so you can see what the pattern again. We've done a chain two, so now it's time to wrap the yarn around our needle, I'm sorry, our hook twice. I call it needles a lot because I'm used to sewing, sorry about that. We're gonna skip 
this next opening and go into the one after that. So we go down, yarn over, pull through, four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. That's our triple crochet. Now we gotta do another. So we yarn, I'm sorry, wrap it around our hook twice, go down into that opening, grab our yarn, yarn over, pull it up. You've got four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we've got two, two, two skipping spaces and then the chain in between our pairs of, I'm sorry, triple crochets. Again, if you get lost, just rewind, go back. Um, I'm try not to go too fast for you, but I know when you're learning, everybody's too fast. So just take your time. If you mess up, just pull it out and start over again. Don't get overwhelmed. You also might find that your first one you make might end up being a little too loose. It might feel like it's really huge because you're too scared to pull too tight. And then some beginners are real tight. They're like, all their stitches are like pulled really, really tight. So it just takes you a little while to get the rhythm and kind of understand your tension and how loose you can be without being too loose. You t it shouldn't be something that's really tense. It should be a nice relaxing ho you know, hobby that you can watch TV or do you know, when you're sitting somewhere or whatever. So don't try to stress yourself out by pulling too tight or anything. It can be nice and you know, easy going hobby type things. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue this pattern all the way around and I'll meet you when we get back over here. Just continue what we've done, skipping a space, going into the next space, doing two triple crochets with a two chains in between. So once you've come back all the way around, you should be where I am. So where you've ended up is you've done your last two triple crochets, you've done your two chains stitches here. So you should have that space here that would be the one we would skip. So what we need to do is slip stitch into here to close this circle again. So again, we're gonna count up to the fourth stitch. One, two, three, four. We're gonna insert into that. Yarn over, pull through that where we came in and then pull through the loop on your hook for a slip stitch. What we're gonna do is slip stitch into this opening to bring us up to the next level. So we're just gonna go down into that opening there, yarn over and come back up, and then pull that where you just yarned over back through the loop on your hook. So that was a slip stitch there. So what we're gonna do for the next round will be to repeat the pattern that we just did. So we're gonna do two triple crochets and then in every other with a spacing of two, okay? So let's start by doing our first chain four up. So one, two, three, four. And again, our first chain four simulates a triple crochet. It's gonna count as a triple crochet. So again, we're gonna go two triple crochets. So that's our first, we'll do a second. Wrapping around twice, going into that opening right there. Yarning over, you've got four loops on your hook. Yarn over, come through two loops. Yarn over, come through two loops. Yarn over, come through two loops. So now you, that first chain is our triple crochet, our triple crochet we just did. And then we're gonna chain two for spacing. So one chain, two chain. We're not gonna go in this space, we're gonna go into this space. So we're gonna wrap our yarn around twice around our hook, skip that space, go into this space, Yarn over, pull through. We've got four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Triple crochet. We're gonna need to do another one. So we wrap around twice, go into that opening there. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Again, you see we're just repeating the exact row we just did, nothing's different. So a chain two. Again, we do a triple crochet, so we wrap around twice, skip that space, go into the next space, yarn over, pull up, you've got four, yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, wrap twice, go in, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Two triple crochets. Then you're gonna do two chains for the spacing. So you see the exact same pattern. Just as you did on the last round, we're gonna go all the way back around again, repeating that pattern. Two triple crochets, two chain stitch, skipping every other spot. Just like we did the last round, so go ahead and finish that and I'll meet you back around here. You've gone all the way around and you've done your chain two here. We're just gonna finish it up with a slip stitch. You're gonna go into that fourth chain, one, two, three, four. Again, straight down into that stitch. Yarn over, oops, yarn over, pull through, and then pull it through the loop on your hook. Okay, so once we've slip stitched in there, you can see we pretty much have a curved shaped bun cover. And all we need to do is do a finished edge around here. And now instead of doing triple crochets and chain, we're gonna do what's called a half double crochet. And we're gonna do one in the smaller openings and two in the larger openings. The larger openings where we did the chain twos. So we're gonna do one half double crochet in here and two in here, one in here, two in here, all the way around. And they're super easy. So all you need to do is wrap around once, not twice like a triple, just wrap once. Go into that small opening there, yarn over, and you're gonna have three loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. Super easy. So again, in the larger spaces, we're gonna do two of those. So we yarn over, go into the space, yarn over, come up. You've got three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. So now into this little smaller space, we're gonna do one half double. So wrap it around once, go into the space, yarn over, three loops on your hook, yarn over, come through all three into the larger space, you're gonna do two of those. So wrap it around once, go into the space, yarn over, three loops on your hook, yarn over, go through all three. Wrap around, go in, yarn over, come out, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And again, these are called a half double crochet. And we're gonna do that all the way around the edge in the smaller spaces, you're gonna do one. In the larger spaces, you're gonna do two. So just follow that pattern coming all the way around and back to the beginning, and I'll meet you there. I've finished your half double crochets all the way around. You're gonna be back here to where you started. And then what you'll need to do is to finish this off. You are done crocheting your bun cover. Pat yourself on the back. Hooray, you finished. So what you're going to do is just do a single chain stitch like that and then you're just going to cut a few inches or so of your yarn you can cut it off like that snip and then take your hook and just pull and then pull that little tail and you've knotted it off so there is your crocheted bun cover hooray and as you can see it naturally kind of curves into the shape. So the inside there is the wrong side. And of course this is prettier is the right side. But if you look at them, you can tell a difference. You can tell which is the wrong and what is the right if it happens to turn the wrong way. So now what we're gonna do is weave in our ends. The first thing you're gonna do is here, this is where we began our slip knot. And as I said, you could kind of cinch that in by pulling it. Just don't be the Hulk and break your yarn because that would be bad. So you're gonna take your yarn needle, which this is kind of disappears in here, it's clear plastic. But go ahead, it's got a huge eye, so it shouldn't be too hard to thread. And go ahead and pull that through. And then what you're gonna do is basically just hide this tail into these stitches. You can kind of weave in and out, weave in and out. I just kind of go under here and just kind of tuck it into these, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, I'm going under those stitches there and pull it through and then kind of just tuck it 
up under here. And you basically what you do, you're wanting to catch this so that it doesn't come unraveled. You want to hide this and tuck it away. So once you've kind of hidden about an inch to two inches worth of tail, you can go ahead and cut it off. So in the beginning, you might be really kind of anal retentive and want to get rid of every last square inch of it. But once it's wound in there pretty good and you're pretty sure it's not going to come unraveled or undone, you can go ahead and trim that off. So that you can see it looks nice and pretty and that end is gone. So we're going to need to do that same thing with this tail here at the end. And if your yarn became all crazy frazzled like this and it won't go through your eye, just trim it off. And go ahead and thread your needle <clears throat> like that. And then what you're going to do on this one is you can go in and out through these stitches like this. You just kind of want to weave it in as best you can. So again, keep it from coming undone, falling out. So once you've woven in an inch or two worth of tail, you can go ahead and trim that off. This one's knotted off, so it's not that big of a deal as the main center one. But as you can see, once you've woven your ends, it looks nice and pretty and finished. So the next thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and add your elastic to cinch this in so that it'll fit snugly on your bun. We are going to use this elastic cording. And again, this isn't the super thin stuff that you use for bracelets that would snap really easy. You want something, you know, akin to a hair tie. So I'm going to go ahead and just thread my yarn needle with some of this elastic cording. So then what you're going to do, um, just go ahead and start wherever you want. But you're going to go right through make sure you leave enough of a tail that it doesn't come undone. And you're going to just weave in and out through the bottom stitches that you just did. So you see this isn't super complicated. Just kind of pull it, you know, in and out, in and out through there. And I try not to cut the elastic off because you don't want it, you want it to be large enough to have some give and play before you trim it off. This is that little tail that we just wove in. And as you can see, as I'm stitching it in, that rough edge is showing, so you can always just trim it in but making sure you don't trim your work. Don't cut your yarn to your actual work because that would be bad. Anyway, so you keep just weaving your elastic cording or your regular elastic through here. That's why you don't want to use an elastic that's too thick, like an eighth inch of an elastic would work really well because it's thin. So as you can see, you can already cinch it up here and it's gathering it up. So just continue to weave. If I'm getting out of focus, I apologize if I am. It's tricky trying to do this and talk and make sure I'm in focus and show you what you need to see. Ah, multitasking. All right, so I'm just keep weaving in. And you don't want your spaces to be too huge. You kind of want to, you know, gather it up evenly. And go ahead and pull that through. So you see it's cinching it up nice and tight here. So just continue to do that all the way around to get back to the beginning where you started from. All right, so once we've done that and we're all the way back to the beginning, now is where you can kind of trim off this elastic. All right, and again, this is where you kind of just have to play with it and decide how tight you want this to be. Because if you have a little one with not a whole lot of hair and you need this to fit a tiny little bun, you probably want to cinch this in pretty tight so that it can fit on that little bun snugly. But you don't want it so tight of an opening that you can't fit it around the bun. So you just kind of have to eyeball it and play with it with your fingers and get it to a nice amount of elasticity. So it's not super loose, but it's not super tight. So once you've kind of got it where you want it, and you're like, yeah, that looks good. All you're gonna do, this elastic cording is super easy. You can just 
knot it off. And you kind of want to make sure that you knot it several times so those knots don't come undone. Um, and you know what? If you break the elastic, it's not the end of the world. You can weave in a few more inches of elastic and make sure it's, you know, it's not a big deal. But anyway, so once we've knotted that off, you can go ahead and trim close to your knots. And then those little knots will probably get sucked right up into the crochet work. So you're not going to see those. But if they do show a little bit, just put that in the back of the bun. But as you can see, it doesn't really show. It just cinches it in nice and tight. So then once you've got a bun in there, it fills it out nicely. And you can fit that nice and snug, stretch it right up on a, over a bun. And the hair just goes right up inside of there. So that's what we did today. We made a nice little bun cover out of pink yarn. And it was super simple. And if you're a beginner, you now have a completed project and it was inexpensive and it's useful and you can put your hair in it and you can make them any color you want to match a costume or match your ballet leotard or just regular everyday clothes. And you could even be Padme and have one on each side of your head. How cool would that be? Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below and I will do my best to answer them. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm going to hope to try to get, I'm going to hope to try, <laughs> I'm going to try, I hope to tr get more <laughs> craft tutorials up for you in the future as well as sewing ones. And if you like them, subscribe, like, do all that fun stuff and let me know that you'd like to see and I'll do my best to help you. I hope you have a fun day crafting. Enjoy crocheting. Great day. Bye.